being behind that lesson was to kind of instill into you ladies that you're worthy, that you're deserving of opportunities, but you have to project that, and that kind of comes from within, and it comes um, from your persona and how you carry yourself. Understood? Okay, we also talked about how to enter and exit a room, how to leave a lasting uh, first impression, talked about beauty cheeks, not booty cheeks, um, always turning out, that sort of thing. We didn't go up and down stairs, but we'll try to get to that later on. Um, in terms of next time that I come back around, we'll circle back on that. Who was the next speaker that came that I had? Yes. I know someone's been in, they did a social media session, so what was the purpose behind that? Yes. attraction because when you talk to someone you want to keep eye contact right so when you have your face in somebody else's you want to make sure that it's presentable that it isn't looking rough or that it isn't looking like it's wore out so her session was basically telling us how to keep it clean how to keep it nice and how to keep it tight and right so that it's time for you just to get up and do something casually or when it's time for you to dress your face accordingly for a business a business mm -hmm. event right absolutely so it's about self-care and taking care of the skin that you're in. You only have one body, you have one temple. It's your job, it's your responsibility to learn and to utilize the resources that you have so that you can take care of yourself so that you can always project your best self moving forward. Very good. Next next session, what was it? Was it Miss Donna? The attorney? Um, yeah. Who was next? So it was Portia Kelly. So what did you learn from Miss Portia? She's an author, young black and American. about pri 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 prioritizing your passions 
It's about prioritizing your goals. It's about making appropriate goal settings, speaking with other people, creating that network and those support groups, whether it's your family or maybe your family isn't supportive. Maybe it's another counselor, maybe it's Dr. Waits, maybe it's somebody else or another lady in this program. It's about finding a way to keep your candle lit so that you can stay focused and engaged so that you can accomplish your goals. There's absolutely nothing wrong with being a goal digger, right? Going after your goals and reaching them and um, executing them with grace, right? So grit and grace, there's nothing wrong with uh, being a lady that has grit and grace. And part of that is just staying focused and mastering the art of time. Because once that time is gone, you don't get that back, right? So you need to master that. That's a key skill to have. I'm very glad that you got that from Miss Portia. Miss Donna, what did you get from my friend Miss Donna? That's that's okay. the attorney. She's also the designer. Okay. She told us about really being the top of the world. She was telling oh, us that um, she's very gracious. Yes, she taught us a lot. Something that I didn't know. If we were to go out to eat or um, a boss or something with a company, that we weren't supposed to talk like that. <laughs> so that helped me a lot. I was like, oh my God, I had no clue. I've been taking home food every time. So she taught us that, and she also taught us where to put our napkins, where to put our purse, because when I go out to eat, sometimes I would just put my purse back in. She's like, somebody can walk by and snatch it, so don't do that. So what did she tell you to do? She told us to either put it under our seat, or she said we can put it in, um, in our lap. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in our lap. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Some places don't even have a coat check. Yeah. So it's okay to, if you feel comfortable to um, leave your, your things with the coat check. Um, yeah, so that's also something that's acceptable. What else did you get from her? I know she gave poured into you guys a lot. Yes. I have a very bad habit of asking out of pure curiosity if she says that it should eventually come up in the conversation with that person about asking about their accent mm -hmm. and where they're from. Mm -hmm. She had told us that you need to let the conversation just flow and not to just straight up ask yeah yeah so it's, that's about being gracious and um uh upping your schmooge factor is kind of what, what i call it um we also yeah. miss the source in there mm -hmm. we miss the source in there. what's that the expression we miss um johnson about the style the style one on one I'm, I'm, I'm gonna figure out about it. <laughs> okay so back to you were saying about conversation though so it's important to understand that there's an art and there's a flow to conversation. Um, and we'll get into this a little bit later too. There's also an art and a flow to interviewing. So, and I, I bring that up because there have been several opportunities that I've been given. There's offers that have been made to me. I've been flown out to places to meet with people and to meet with executives. And it was all about how does this young lady, how does she conduct herself in public? And they watch everything from how you look Say hi to Miss Donna Rose. She's listening right now. Hey, Donna! <laughs> <laughs> Love you, girl. <laughs> um, so offers have been presented to me strictly um, on how I act, how I spoke, how I allowed the conversation to kind of move. And it's a very, very important skill set to have, which, um, which is going to take us back into this session um, here. But I want to go back. So, yes, ma'am. Miss um, Donna also taught us the importance of where you put your cell phone mm -hmm. with different occasions. Right. So she told us that we weren't supposed like it's it's professional not to have it out during any type of business that you're conducting, Absolutely. whether it's in a meeting right. or if it's at the dinner table. Right. And she also taught us that even at home, having a cell phone at the dinner table was not an efficient thing to do because the dinner table is supposed to be set for com like conversation, exactly. hello, how are you doing, how was your day, things of that nature that keeps you connected with your family mm -hmm. because she told us that she doesn't allow her children to do it. Mm -hmm. But she says occasionally it will happen. Yeah. Like it's it's like something you should be doing and should have it because she knows it's time for dinner but she does it in the central mix. And that was important to me because I noticed that a lot of people do it. I mean, it may be conscious, it may be unconscious, but I know that anytime I go somewhere, I have my phone. Mm -hmm. So, like, it's here now. Like, I sometimes, most times it's face down, mm -hmm. but sometimes it is face down, unconsciously, because I know I'm getting ready to do something, and my phone's the last thing I'm thinking about. Right. So, it's important. So, I think part of what Ms. Donna was also trying to drill home with you guys is what you all are learning to do is you're also learning how to build relationships. It's about maintaining relationships, and it's about staying present in the moment. You don't want to miss out on, a, out on an opportunity because you were not um, wholeheartedly, you weren't fully mentally and physically present. A lot of times when people have their phones out, what are you doing? Checking Snapchat, checking Instagram. You might even be sending an email, but 
can, is that something that can wait another five minutes or another 30 minutes to an hour? Stay fully present and stay fully vested in the moment because you have no idea what could happen because of this relationship that you're developing with him. She also told us that when you're in the room, like with family, you have an energy or anything, uh -huh. don't eat before any of everybody else gets in the room. That's right. really key. Yeah, it is. You should wait um, until everyone has yeah. their, their plate and then um, we'll get it more into that in a minute. But whenever in doubt, you figure out who the most important person is at the table or who your hostess is. And when they start to reach for their plate or their food and they start eating them, that's when you start to eat. So when in doubt, you always kind of follow the lead of the most important person at the table or your head hostess. Make sense? All right. All right, Miss Ty, my friend Miss Ty, what did she teach you all? What you learned from her? Also, you know, it was a good. Se it was my favorite session because I got to learn about my body type. My yeah. body, yeah, the body type or the shape of my body. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, wow! And also learned the colors that look good on my skin. Yeah. And also to know that you know you don't have to go by everybody's look or picture or version of you. As long as you're okay with yourself and your clothes, that's fine. Absolutely. So that's very powerful, and I'm glad you hit on all that because that's what I wanted to highlight. It's about understanding who you are. When you understand who you are, your uniqueness is, the things that make you great, then it's easier for you to find things and to put things together to just further enhance who it is that you are. Because when you glow, you glow, you know, and people are attracted to it. So that's beautiful. All right, any questions thus far? All right, we're going to get into, I'm not going to. What did you learn from Jerkins? Okay, so first things first, you see this? This is a basic, yes ma'am, do you have one? So the handout, this is very, 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 very basic. I'm gonna be honest with you, you'll see this, there's more than one way to do this, but if you understand the basics, then you'll be able to work your way through it. If you're ever at a formal setting, typically, um, I don't know if you all will be doing this again. I know last year the ladies went to an event called Dying of Divas, but that was, um, it was a luncheon, I think, and it was a little bit more of a formal affair. The, the great thing about those type of events, the flow of service, um, the program kind of keeps up with the flow of service, so it's not something that you really um, necessarily you have to gauge. forks on the left and so how do you remember if it's on the left or the right this is what I do somebody spell left
go right. R-I-G-H-T. Boom. You got it? It doesn't matter whether you're setting the table or you're sitting down at the table. You can spell it. If you remember it, then you know your forks are always on the left-hand side. And your knife and your spoons are always on the right-hand side. Now, typically, if you see um, utensils at the top, what's going to happen is the fork is going to be closest to your plate, and the teeth of the fork is going to face away from the teeth of the fork on the left-hand side. So that means that this top fork here is going to face that way. Typically, if it's sitting at the top of your plate, this is going you're going to use these last. So this is your dessert fork and spoon. Make sense? Spoon will sit on top of that. So the rule of thumb, when in doubt, you don't know what to do. They're bringing you soups and salads and things. Whatever they put out first, you're going to use the utensils on the outside of the plate. So you're going to work your way from the outside in. Make sense? What did I just say? <laughs> outside in, right? So they just put, they came and just brought me a bowl, right? This is soup. So which spoon am I going to use? Outside. The spoon on the outside. Don't even think about it. This is, it got to be it. It has to be it. This is how you, okay, so when you're drinking, when you're eating your soup, how do you scoop your soup? Someone show me. So no, you don't want to scoop it towards you because what happens if I have tomato base and I have on a cream dress, right? And someone bumps me or I, I slip and my slipping, it hits me, right? So I want to scoop out in a way and then I want to come up and take it. Make sense? So scoop out in a way. Please, make sense? All right. So your first course is complete if they take it in a way. Let's pretend this is a salad. <laughs> We're pretending. All right, there's a salad here. Which which utensil am I gonna use? The outside fork. Why? We're gonna start on the outside. We're working our end. We're working our way. You heard a kiss? All right, let's keep it simple. Like outside in. This is a salad fork. Typically, it's a little bit smaller than the dinner fork, but it's on the outside. So I'm eating my salad. Okay, if I'm done with my uh, fork, or I'm done with the meal. I'm gonna place it. I place mine downside. That's the way I was taught. <laughs> TCU taught me downside. So I place my, my fork downside. I place it at an angle. If they're savvy, right, the people, are, and they, they typically are your servers. They're formally trained. They'll see that you've placed your, your utensil down. They'll know that, oh, okay, she's either taking a break or she's done with her meal. They'll sit back. They'll watch you for a little bit. They'll come up to you and they'll ask you, Madam, can I take this from you? Yes, please. Thank you. And it's always please and thank you. You always want to be polite to your servers and your and your bartenders, whoever your coat check people. Like you never know who someone is, and you never know the level of influence that they may have in um, in your future. You just don't know. You could have the CEO of the company standing in acting as a server. You could have a scout in there acting as a server. It could be someone's mother in there acting as a service. But regardless of that. It could be your mother, that could be your grandmother or your great-grandmother, because in this country, for a long time, there are people that look like you and I, those were the only types of jobs that they could be afforded, right? And so a lot of people have sacrificed and they've worked so that you can be in a position, so that you can have these experiences, so that you can go on and do greater, right? So that you can come back and pour into your community. So you always want to be mindful and respectful on how you treat others, especially in service roles. Make sense? Mm -hmm. All right, got that out. So we put our fork and our plate and stuff down. And it's out yet. What if they're bringing the plate and I don't have to? Do I have to bring it to them or can I just put it to the side? They'll, sit, they'll bring it to you, they'll sit it to the side. Yeah, typically um, they'll ask you, are you ready? But typically they'll gauge the situation, they'll watch you. And um, it's all about timing with service, um, with white glove service like that. And so typically you won't run into that situation. If you're still eating, they'll ask you, are you mad? I'm ready to oh, no, no, I'm still working on it. So you say, oh, no, 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 thank you. I'm still working on it. Well, be a lady. That's all you got to do. So know this. <clears throat> so when people are typically serving you, right, they're bringing you a meal. They're coming to your left-hand side to place your food down. If they're going to take food away from you, they're going to come to the right and they're going to pull food away. A lot of people don't notice that, but it's a good, it's a good mental note to know. So they're going to bring you food. They're coming to your right. <clears throat> if they're going to take food away, they're taking it away from the right-hand side. Left, right. Make sense? What did I just say? Okay, perfect. All right, big dinner meal, right? It's come. Or actually, before then, they brought you all a. This is a bread plate, right? And this is a, you know, they have another itty bitty plate that's on the side next to your little bitty plate. There's a little thing of butter, right? So everyone knows you take the bread, you pass it, 
you know, around people are asking for it. When you want a piece of bread, do not make a butter biscuit sandwich. That's country. It's uncooked. Don't do it. Oh, everybody. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, don't do it. <laughs> what you'll do is you'll take your piece of bread, you'll put it on your plate. When the bat butter goes around, you'll take a piece of the butter, you'll put the piece of the butter on your plate. When you want to eat your bread, you'll pinch it. You'll literally pinch a piece of bread, put it back down. You'll take your knife and you'll butter that little piece of bread and you'll eat it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Who's heard that before? Yeah, I've said that a lot to other people. But do not make a butter biscuit sandwich. <laughs> Some people are looking at me like, is she serious? I'm so serious. Do not make a butter biscuit sandwich. <laughs> All right, what questions do you have for me right now? Yes, ma'am. But what is my bread already small? I can't just... No, no <laughs> butter biscuit sandwich. Don't, don't stick. If you can't swallow it in one setting, right? You can't just put it up to your mouth and eat it. That's a good rule, okay? Pinch it. Is that what a bagel too? If the piece of bread they, they bought you is some fancy bagel, then yes, you pinch it. <laughs> pinch it. Formal. This is for formal table settings. Yes, pinch it. Oh. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I mean, what, what do you say? Perfect surface makes perfect, right? So when you're going out to eat with your family, your friends, you're going out to restaurants, that's the best time to practice because if there's something that you don't do well or you feel uncomfortable with holding your knife or your fork appropriately and cutting your meat, I'd rather sit around with my friends and my family and make a mistake and waste stuff over me than sit in front of somebody who has a $100,000 scholarship to help pay for my, you know, for my education and mess up in front of them or be out for a job interview that's gonna pay me, you know, $60,000, but based on how I do in the interview and how I can sell myself in this, this interview, in this setting will determine the type of benefits that they give me or the relocation package that they give me. It makes the difference. The slightest little thing that you do, you, it makes a difference. You're constantly under scrutiny, you're always being judged, and you have to put your best foot forward. Period. That's the game. Make sense? This is with all bread too, like some croissants, they come already buttered. Everything, if we're in a situation like this, and there are people that are around that you don't know, whether you know them or you don't, you go in there and you boss up, pinch the bread. Okay, pinch the croissant. P pinch it. Don't butter the bread. Though. Don't, don't butter it and fold it over and make a sandwich and eat it like a taco. Don't do it, just don't do it. Pinch the bread, seriously, it is this simple. I take a piece, pick it up. Pinch. There you go, don't eat it. I do that all the time, don't eat it. I pinch it and put a little piece in your mouth. Okay. And your okay. mouth shouldn't be stuffed and you're like, right. like you chew with your so mouth. I'm going ask you a question. It's like, you, well, excuse me. <laughs> right, you want to you wanna come across as being a lady. You know, just be a lady. And it's easy to do, you just have to practice, okay? All right, so now they're bringing you your main course, right? It might be fish, it might be chicken, it might be steak. You know, don't cut more than two to three pieces of your meat at a time and eat it. All right, so I'm going to cut my food. I'm going to eat a piece of meat or something. After I eat, drop your utensils and chew your food. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. What I just said, what I just said. Chew, chew. And then let the conversation flow. Remember, you don't need to chew with your mouth open and that kind of stuff. Make sense? Make sense? Mm -hmm. Make sense? Make sense? Sure. You got it? I do have a question. It's about the salad. Okay, so some people like like a lot of dressing, right? Mm -hmm. Like with either whether it's Italian, ranch, mm -hmm. or something like that. Do you have a suggestion on how to put it on the salad or how much? Because some people drizzle it. It's a it's a personal preference and my thing is you wanna remember it's about staying neat. It's not necessarily about this meal. It's about getting through the service and having the conversation so that you can sell yourself or so that you can build a relationship so you can call on that at a future date. So what's more valuable, the salad and the salad dressing or the relationship? relationship. It's about relationships. Relationships get you job interviews. Relationships get you funding for your programs. Relationships get you new opportunities. Relationships can make the difference between you traveling for X amount of thousands of dollars and traveling for free. Relationships can be the difference between you having a vet bill and you not having a vet bill. You know what I'm saying? And well, like whatever you can think of, uh, there's a lot of power in you knowing how to 
socially grace through a situation or through um, an opportunity and you not. So it's, it's really, you have to think about it like that. Make sense? Yeah. All right, next question. That's it. Yes. In, cer in certain dining situations, uh -huh. is there a way to decipher between what type of professionalism the dining service has? Like, is it always going to be salad, soup, bread, or does it vary service? It'll change up. Service? It'll change up. It'll change up, and it, a lot of times you don't know. If you're going to a banquet or something, a lot of times they might tell you what's on the dinner ticket. I typically don't pay attention to that because I'm thinking about, okay, who's going to be there? Um, Who's going to be on the speaker's panel? What type of information do I need to research on these people or on this situation? Because you have to remember, too, when you're going to these places, you also need to be able to network. And everybody doesn't always want to know about what's going on with basketball wives or what's happening uh, with football or even uh, they don't want to know about the latest hair care products. So you need to research the background of the people that you're going to be um, networking with or that you're, that's going to be at your table. You need to figure out what their interests are and then you need to be prepared to kind of probe and ask them questions so that you all can have something else to connect with. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Right. That's that's a skill on, on how to be well-rounded or even how to navigate a situation where you feel like you have absolutely nothing in common with the people at the table. Everybody's not going to look like you going into the, you know, it's moving forward. Everybody's just not going to look like you. You're the cream of the crop. You're different at what you do. Um, you're highly unique. You're going to be highly successful. And part of that means also working with people who don't look like you. And it's not a bad thing, right? Because somebody has to go and someone has to be a great representative and someone has to be able to have some experiences and be able to come back to your community and come back to your family and teach them and show them another path and another way up and out. Make sense? So that's just the name of the game. So what did I just tell you as another key takeaway for you to know how to do when you're going into any social situation to have dinner? Make sure, make sure you have a background. She just said it. Research, if you can, try to research the people that you'll be working with. Sorry, research the people that you're networking with. You want to find um, extra information about them um, and things that they're interested in, you want to kind of brush up on that so that if they start talking about some of those things, then you can um, actually be able to, to gauge a conversation. Now, what to do when you're an introvert? Because I think I'm an introvert, actually. I have moments where I don't want to talk about people. I don't want to be bothered. I just, oh, I'm good at what I do, but oh, I just don't want to talk. When, when, you, when you're like that or you start to feel like that, you have to find a way to ask questions and to make it about the other people at the table. You got to get them to talk. And get them and keep them talking and keep them engaged. All right. If you're feeling shy, you got to break out of it. And that's okay. Just fake it until you make it. But if you project self confidence and then you find ways to ask those probing questions and those questions that make them tell a story and you're able to pull those stories out of them, then that's how you're going to get through that service. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Boss moves. So you just ate your food, right? Your vegetables, your meat. It was really good. You didn't spill any gravy on you. <clears throat> so alert your server and let them know that you're done. Also, everyone knows, right, your fork, you're holding your left hand, your knife and stuff on the right. And so, and you're eating. Makes sense, right? You're done with your food, right? <clears throat> it's a signal. It's a universal signal. I got a question. So if I get a piece of meat, do I cut all my meat up in several different pieces? What did we say? No, no, no. 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 Right. So, a couple pieces, put it in my mouth, put my plate down, my fork, I'm chewing, I'm eating, we're talking, put food back in my mouth, we're eating, we're chewing, we're talking, I'm cutting again, I'm eating some of my vegetables, I pinch a piece of bread, I'm eating, come back, right? You don't rush it. Don't rush it. Just take time. Dinner service takes a minute. What if I need salt and pepper and it's across the table? How do I get it? How do you get it? All right. So and you always ask for both because they make them here too. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't have to ask for it. It's just that's just common etiquette, it's right? If somebody asks for salt, you pass them both the salt and the pepper. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yeah. All right. So you're done with your dinner service, the signal, the signal to let the servers and everyone know that you're done. You just, you just want to cross it. That's how I was taught. Cross your, your, your knife across your fork and then they'll come by and they'll get it. 
Now, typically, I leave my napkin in my lap. Um, depending on the situation, you can put it to the left of the plate um, or you can put it in the center of the plate after the server gets there, but typically, I'll just keep it in my lap. And then um, they'll come by and they'll actually ask me for it. But, but if what I did I say? When in doubt, what you do? What do you do? No, when in doubt about how to handle the situation, what do you do? For the leader of the what doing. You're looking for the most, you're looking at the most important person at the table and how they eat and how they act. You can, it's okay to mirror and, or to mimic that. But when in doubt, you that's who you look at. You look at your hostess or the head person at the table. But then you all, and even if they start to act out a little bit and they get a little, you know, a little cry, a little cry, cry, you never know. It could be a test. You always, you, you're, you're in charge of you, so you always want to play a conservative. So it's always best to be a little conservative. I'm very conservative when I go out with people. Yes. Uh, okay. I can go. Um, yeah. I was just going to ask you, what do you do with the napkin if you have to go and use the restroom? So if you need to go and use the restroom, right? Sorry, that was my step. I'm having dinner. My napkin's across my lap. If I'm going to get up and go to the restroom, I'm going to get up. I was caught across the back of the chair as long as it's not nasty. You know, if you got all kinds of stuff and crud on it, then yeah, you want to keep that out of sight. But I was caught across the back of the chair. And so typically, if you're in an interview, right? And say you're the only lady in the interview, or you're with a bunch of guys, or the server, they're escorting you to your table. <coughs> Nine point nine five times out of ten. If one of the men that you're with does not pull out your seat, the server will pull out your seat. So be prepared to have a seat and to say thank you. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Alrighty. Questions that's fine. My question was, I thought that was a, <clears throat> I thought when you had dinner, there's a certain way you're supposed to place your utensils as, as the lady, someone knows the food is good or if it's okay or if it's not. Because I think I remember Miss Donna saying you place, you cross them to say it wasn't good, and you place them at the side to say that it was. Is it? That might be something that's for um, a little, a little bit more formal. I'm not going to say that that's not true. Um, for basic situations where you, um, for what you all are doing, I've told this is how I was taught. So I'm teaching you all how I was taught. When you're done with your service, you cross it to signal that I'm done. Another thing that I've seen, you can place them together this way to, sing, to signal that you're actually done with that particular course. Mm -hmm. Make sense? That's why I said earlier, when you have your salad, right, and you're eating your pork, you place it kind of to the side. Same difference. Mm -hmm. In most situations, the servers, they're going to read you, your body language, um, the timing of the, of, um, the event, the flow of the night, and um, they'll know what that means. Make sense? Questions? What am I going to tell you? What if I don't want coffee? Do they have coffee? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So typically, let's pretend this is a coffee cup. table settings where your cup is actually in the center like this. Does everybody see it? Mm -hmm. Okay. If you don't want coffee, so that means they're going to come around, they're going to pour coffee, or they put coffee here on the side. If you don't want coffee, you just flip your plate, your coffee cup upside down. Make sense? And as they'll come by, they'll do a sweep by and they'll just, it'll, it'll be smooth. They'll take it. And you won't, they won't ask you about it or anything. That's the signal. You flip your coffee cup upside down. Make sense? Yes, ma'am. What if I put sugar in my tea? How do I stir inside the cup? Oh, that is a good one. Um, for me, <laughs> there's usually a teaspoon on the table somewhere, so you, I'll just grab this spoon and then you'll stir it. It's a smaller spoon. Mm -hmm. You stir it in the center of the mm -hmm. cup you don't so want that you're hear. not clinking all in the side. Oh, like yeah. that. Somebody wants to say all that. This country is loud. 
not as distracting, but you just, you know, kind of stir it in a little bit, in little circles. If there isn't a teaspoon there, you can just take, if there isn't a teaspoon there, then you just take the spoon that's furthest out, and then you'll use that. So if you, there was no soup service or anything, and there's a spoon that's sitting out, then the spoon that's on the outside, right? Remember I said we work from the outside in? You'll grab that spoon. If there is no spoon there, your dessert spoon is there, grab that spoon, just work from the outside in. Makes it easier. Yeah, just don't don't go crazy with your sugar packets. I mean, you want to stay stay clean and um, just stay clean. You don't want to be, you know. I like I like what Lyric said. Lyric said, just push through if it's not that good, because once again, you're there for a different mission, not to have a good tea. Exactly. So just push through. <laughs> It's a dinner fork. So what you do with dinner? You have dinner. It's a dinner fork. I can't Same fork. switch. I wouldn't switch. I mean, unless you dropped it on the floor. If you dropped it on the floor, you leave it on the floor, and as someone comes by, um, you'll ask them for another. They'll, they'll see that you dropped it, or you'll say, I dropped my fork. You know, can I please have another? And they'll get you another one. I went to a first grade school for Oklahoma State University. Let's just be real. Let's That's just be real. real. Let's be yeah. real. We're teaching you the basics. This is formal. This is kind of what's standard out oh, here. The most important person at the table, if they do something that's a little different, you can slide with it. But if you know better, you do what? You do it. Boom. Don't complicate it. <laughs> okay, so you know how, like, they give you a prescription, but, like, during life or something, like, you get the class? You mm -hmm. know? What do you mean? No, to like, do a toast. To do a toast. Okay, so toasting. Let's, let's talk about toasting etiquette. So if you're at an event, you're the guest at this event, I've seen it happen. People jump up and say, I want to propose a toast, and they start clinking. That's so country. You ain't even programmed to do that. Don't do that. Fall back. Fall back. So typically, the toast is done by the host or the hostess at the beginning of the dinner, and it's kind of to signal everyone that um, it's to signal a welcome. Um, any other toast that will follow after that, typically it'll happen at the, at the time that dessert is passed or when it's, it's time for dessert. You just pay attention. They'll pass out another flute or a glass for champagne or you use your water glass or your wine glass that's in front of you. But, yeah, that's toasting etiquette, basically, in a nutshell. It's going to happen at the start of your dinner service, and then if any other toast start to happen, if they don't immediately happen right after, like in a wedding, it'll happen around the dessert time. And there'll be typically a formal announcement. But that's not for, you know, you all to worry about doing. Make sense? Okay. Keep it classy. All right. So we talked about that. Yeah, we talked about that. Which way do you pass the bread again? There's there's kind of some different rules on it. I just say pass it to the left. Okay. When in doubt, pass it to the left. There's different rules on it. Um, serving etiquette. The printer's going to give you your food on what side? Left. Right. They're going to take it away on one side? Right. right. All right. So the first goblet that's in front of you typically is going to be a little bit shorter or fatter. That's typically going to be your water goblet or glass. The one that's behind it is going to be like your wine glass because you all are under 21 for the most part. You won't have wine. You might have some fruit juice or some tea. <laughs> yes, ma'am. How do they know I was a kid? You better be, uh, have some integrity and let them know that you're under 21 because this is the thing you don't want to happen. You don't want to be at an event and then get tipsy or, or get, you know, a little loose and then you slip up and you start saying things. You got to know what your what your minimums are. I'm serious. I've seen it all the time. And working in some of the industries that I've worked in, being that kind of the PR person, I've had to kind of clean up and buffer situations where people didn't know how to handle themselves. 
and it can get dangerous because people don't, you know, like, so you don't ever want to be that person. It's not a good look because I can guarantee you, you'll leave a bad taste in people's mouth. And you don't want people to, to you, you want your reputation to supersede you for all the right reasons. Make sense? All right. Yes, ma'am. Um, Ms. Bella told, let us know that um, she said that even if we are over 21, it's a formal reason and we want to, you know, present ourselves and just say, you know, why at the moment. Do, we oh, yeah, but I or do you think it's okay or should we know our limit or? If you're under 21. <laughs> I mean, so, I'm so saying above. I'm saying, uh, so what's the law? If you're under 21, what's the law? It's right? No alcohol, right? right? No, so I, I don't, it doesn't okay. matter. Hold on. Let me get the point out. So it doesn't matter, right? So just, oh, no, no, thank you. Just like with coffee service. I'm fine, you know? But if someone comes to bring you wine or something, they're not, typically they're not just going to fill your glass up, right? They're going to ask you if you want something or they're going to they're gonna ask you to taste it. Now, if you get older and don't want the drink, then you don't take the drink. The same thing, oh, no, thank you, right? A good out for me that I've done, I just say, no, thank you all. I'm not drinking. Oh, I'm driving, you know? Who's going who's gonna to not appreciate that you are going to be a responsible person you know at the event now if you're walking around and it's a cocktail hour a trick that i always do i get a glass of water and i ask the bartender to put a cherry and a lime in it it looks like a drink it looks like a cocktail it's not a cocktail it's water with cherry and a lime in it and i'm walking around and i'm talking to people and i'm drinking my drink boss moves right take notes right it's not a vodka shot it's not a it's not a, a, a lemon drop it's water so you can never go wrong with walking around at an event with some water you want to be able to have all your mental faculties about you so that you can be sharp so that you can either open the deal you can prospect the deal or you can close the deal and sometimes the deal you're trying to close is someone just answering the phone when you call you're always selling yourself that makes sense all right next question did that answer your question? No? Okay, so when leaving the event, right? You're at a hosted event, um, dinner's over with, everyone starts to network and everything, and it's time to go. You don't have to hang on to the host or hostess. You don't have to keep them tied up. Just a brief hug with the cordial goodbye. Oh my gosh, it's so great meeting you. Thank you so much. Oh, dinner was fabulous. I'm going to follow up with you and be out. You don't have to stick around for all around wrong reasons. You know, you make, am I making sense? Yeah. Just keep it brief. Keep it cordial. You're going to see that person again. The seed was in, uh, implanted. She said before, your, your mission, your objective is to get through, to make a great impression, and to be able to open the door for something else. You're planting seeds is what you're doing, right? And you just, you, there's, a, there's a saying that says you can count the number of seeds in an orange, but you can never count the number of oranges, oranges inside of a seed. Your job is to plant seeds. Plant seeds. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. Plant seeds. Let's see. So let's talk about this. Let's talk about tipping. <coughs> Boss moves, the one-on-one. So <coughs> if, whether this is formal or not, you're going to kind of have to gauge it. But when you're going out, say um, if you're going out with just other colleagues or um, potential mentors or other business associates, um, I do this regardless, but you want to kind of just be mindful of, because they're watching you to see who's tipping and who's not tipping. So if you have a valet person and they parked your car, you know, um, you can do it either before or after. I, sometimes, just depending on who, how they are, I do both. I do a little bit of both because one, I want them to take care of my car and I want them to remember me and I want them to just take good care of me when I come back, right? And it's always about relationships. And then um, two, I also want to show that as a gesture, as a thank you. Because a lot of times what people don't realize is that servers and people who work in the service industries, they don't get paid a lot of money. I mean, some people that work in restaurants, they're making 2 to $5 an hour. So what they live off of is tips. And a lot of times the tips, they go into a pool and they have to share them amongst the other servers. So like the bus boy, he doesn't get paid that much money. So he, you know, they, this is how they manage to live. So if you can imagine what that's like sometimes, I mean, do right by people, tip. And my thing is, if you cannot afford to tip, do not go out. You can't afford to go out. If you cannot afford to tip, don't go out. You need to wait another week and add some money to that budget to do that. Make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. 
So typically what restaurant you can? Um, the tips you can I've heard that tips like the way you tip differs among differs amongst the size of the group. Like if it's eight or more, they expect you to tip ten percent. Mm -hmm. But if it's under eight, they expect you to tip fifteen percent. The gratuity? Yeah, yeah they, I think it's well not necessarily gratuity because I know some restaurants they don't charge gratuity because they're high end restaurants, but the size of the group typically dictates what each person is supposed to tip. Is that a is that a side of norm or is that like more? I think that's norm? just um their way of trying to ensure that people will tip and that they don't take advantage of the service. That's personally what I think. It may not be fact, but that's what I think. When I go out, I'm mentally I'm getting ready to tip anywhere from 15 to 20 percent usually when we go out to eat. Another rule of thumb, when in doubt, you can take whatever the taxes is, multiply it by 2 or 2.5, and then that's the tip that you do. Yes, ma'am? Yes. So whatever the taxes are, multiply it by 2 or 2.5, and that's what you tip. But mentally, I'm thinking 15 and 20 percent. So, like, when you're going out with people for these different um, events, or, I mean, I mean, it could be expensive. It could be an expensive thing, or we could just be going and talking. You don't have to get a whole meal because everybody's eating meal. Get an appetizer. You know what I'm saying? You can get an op appetizer, and if your friend is there with you, offer to split the appetizer, and then you maybe have a cocktail, or you just stick with your water and some fruit juice, and um, you get a dessert. <laughs> Let's be real. You can still conduct business. You can still <clears throat> um, enjoy conversation and, and sit there for two or three hours and do what you need to do, you know, and take care of business the way you need to take care of business. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. All right. So, <clears throat> people that you'll see, the person that validates your car, you want to tip them. Um, typically, I've seen anywhere from 5 to $20 um, uh, interaction with tipping. If it's someone who's carrying your bags, like at the airport, typically it's about $2 a bag or so, $2, $3 a bag. That's what I like to do. And then I also believe in being, um, if you can do it, if, you know, if you can't, you can't do it. But if you can be generous in tipping, then be generous because I'm a firm believer that whatever you put out in the universe is eventually some way, somehow is going to come back to you. All right, so you can be you can be stingy with your time, with your with your giving, with your talents. You gotta put your best out there every single time, and just trust and know that it's gonna come back to you. But that's more of a philosophy, spiritual thing. Um, but I mean, it does. It relates to this. Uh, let's see. Yes, ma'am. You know, typically, if they're paying attention, you can kind of signal, and because they're always looking back at you, you just just. But it's discreet. Make a box move. Be real discreet. Right? Um, you're talking to a bartender or a friend, and you want some extra great service. Boss move. You fold up your money. You slide it to them. Like I do it. I've done it a lot. <laughs> We've been out of town. I just want somebody to take care of us, or <clears throat> I've been gone out, and I knew that people were take covering me, and and I didn't have anything to worry about, but I had money in my pocket. Right? So. Every time I pass by today, let me slide them a five or two because I know that they're rowdy in there. But by me doing that, you know, it kind of makes them more attentive and um, uh, towards you. And like you said, at the end of the day, it's about opening up and setting yourself up so that you can have the relationship, so that you can have the connection, so that people can remember you when you come back by. And then so people can also in the future be kind of generous and gracious and open towards you in the future. Right? If there's a long, long line, you'd be surprised what you can do by sliding somebody a 20, 50, 100 dollar bill. I mean, <coughs> boss moves, like I said. Like, as you get there, there's power in um, working with people. And it is not that you're paying people off, you're respecting them for their time and for what they do. Right? It's, it's difficult to be a bartender at night if you've never done it. I've managed bartenders before. It's just difficult. Um, it's hard, like what they have to do and then what they have to be aware of and then how they still have to talk and make sure that everybody's happy and there's 100, 150 people trying to get there at the bar. There's a lot that's going on. Same thing with doormen. There's a lot that's going on. It's part of their job. They're, they're one of the first points of contact and keeping, keeping people safe and ensuring that you have a great experience. Same thing with the guys that valet your car. There's cars going everywhere. It's, it's hectic. People are yelling. Um, they don't feel good. A lot of times they have to park your car two and three blocks away and they're running to go get your vehicle. Literally, they're in a sprint to go get your vehicle. They're keeping their wits about them and they're bringing your car back without any damages or dents or anything. They're also going to make sure that your vehicle is properly secured so no one breaks into your car. 
um, they have other relationships with people. It's a whole system and network just so that you can get here and have dinner at a gala or so you can have your lunch. And unless you really work the back end on some of these places, you really don't understand or you really don't have an appreciation for it, but it happens. And so you got to respect people for their time and what they do. And if you don't have it and you can't tip or something happened and you forgot to bring cash on you, just being kind and being nice and being respectful goes a long way. A compliment to that person's manager can be just as it can be just as rewarding as a tip at times because you never know the type of day that that employee may have had. They may have been going through a rough spot with um, patch with that supervisor manager, but you taking the time to find one of the higher ranking people that kind of oversee that space or that venue to compliment this person that looks really great on them and for their record. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So there's ways to kind of get around certain situations if you don't have it. Question. I think it's a handshake. I think something as simple as a handshake in person. I'd be like, hey, come here, I have a question for it. And as you start talking to them, you kind of just grab the hand and you put it in there. Well, what do you think about this? And is it possible for us to get in um, in a few moments? Do you think you can make that happen? Yeah. It's that simple. I've DJed, I've DJed events, right? And people want to hear certain songs, right? They have a playlist. Hey, what's up, DJ? Hey, mom. Girl, give me a hug and oh, oh my goodness, there's a 50 in my hand. Absolutely. <laughs> I'll figure it out. Like, I'll find a way to ease that tiger got toe song, country song that nobody like knows about. Like, I'll find it. I'll YouTube it and I'll make sure it's clean and I'm going to find a way <laughs> so that you can get your song. Right? It's all about, so, I mean, and it works both ways. You might be on the receiving end of that. So, I mean, you just, those are things that you just, in social situations, you just make yourself, um, you're aware of and you understand what's going on because if you know the game then you can really know how to play the game and you can really leverage yourself and the situations and the resources around you so that you can get what you need okay does that make sense what questions do you have for me always tip your waitresses and your bartenders if you're out if you're in a washroom, you see the little people, sometimes they sit in the washroom, they hand you paper towel, or they're, they're making sure that it's clean. If you can hand them a dollar or two or three or five, give it to them. It's really gross to sit in the bathroom all night. I'm sorry. I hate it. <laughs> it's, it's just think about it. It's gross. Anything and everything that's happening in the bathroom, that person is hearing it, they're smelling it, they're cleaning it up, and they're just trying to make sure that people have what they need so that they can have a good time. And a lot of times the products that you see out on the table, those are products that they have personally bought and invested in and they're putting out there so that you can use, so that you can stay fresh and so that you can look your best. So the very least thing you can do is to tip them. Typically, I force the tip on them. Like, um, a lot of times, um, some people, they're new, or they feel like if they do get tipped, um, like, they might get in trouble or something like that. But if you kind of press upon them that, no, this is something that I want to do, then they'll, they'll, they'll feel, they might feel more comfortable in receiving it. Some people are just being humble, and they don't want to. But, I mean, if you're blessed to be a blessing, then you need to give that. And then at the same token, we have to learn how to receive when people are trying to give us something well right you block the flow of energy when you don't do that so you give it and you receive it so it's it's not included um, working in hospitality and those tickets and stuff when you pick that up at the end of the night that it's not factored in there mm -hmm. they're making five dollars an hour eight dollars an hour or six seventy five an hour like that's what they're making we don't we don't factor in the tip unless you give you write on the ticket that there's a tip if you want to make sure that they have something personally that they keep then you put that in their hand and say this is for you Whatever you gotta do, but that's for you. It ain't for you to share. And I've done that before, and I've had people do that to me before. And I was just being kind, and I wasn't expecting it. And they're like, "No, that's for you. You keep it." You know what I'm saying? And they like was like for real. So sometimes that's what you gotta do. If you're blessed to be a blessing, then use it. It's your job to be a blessing. All right. What else we got? Make sure that 
sure that you all feel comfortable. If I was to say, hey, come set the table, you all could do it. You feel like you could do that. Mm -hmm. If I put you in a situation um, and you said we're out to eat and there are other people around for you to network with, do you feel that like you could do it? Do you feel comfortable with eating? What's the big rule when you're sitting down to eat in terms of silverware? Outside in. When I go from the outside in, um, where typically is your bread plate located? Right, left upper corner. All right. Um, what are your two glasses that are here? Your base glasses. Water, water, water and water, water and wine. Water. Right. So if there's coffee and I don't want coffee, which one is there? Oh yeah, which one of the, these glasses are yours? That's a good one. Which one is yours? The one with the water. Right or left? No, we're at a round table. We're at a round table. So which right. setting is yours? Oh, to the right. To the right. Absolutely, to the right. Very good. A lot of people mess that up and grab it. They be like, hey, and now you, this person yeah, got it. Uh, they got it. Right. And they now I don't have out. anything. And so. When they, if you do find yourself in that situation, you just kind of look and see how things kind of go, and then you just tell your waitress or service, and be like, hey, they got the glass, too. And then, <laughs> thanks, bro. Good looking out. Yeah, don't, don't hey. <laughs> yeah, but don't ever, don't ever make a huge, huge deal about something. Um, something else that's important, um, if you have allergies or severe food allergies, um, you don't, you, typically your host or your waiter or, um, Whoever's putting on the event, they typically will know. But if for some reason they don't know, you just discreetly ask your your server um, about the food that's being brought out. Or after they put the, the food on your plate, you just kind of tell them to say, hey, I'm severely allergic to shellfish. You know, there's a lobster on my plate. I can't have that. Over. Is there any way you can give me just maybe vegetables? Or is there, are there, just ask them, just say, what are the other options um, that I have? And then maybe they can just bring you a salad or maybe a vegetable plate or something like that. If you're, um, whether it's religious or you have some other dietary restrictions, just be discreet about it and just talk to the server. And they'll find a way to accommodate you because they want everybody to have something in front of them to eat. But it's about how you play it. You have to be a lady about it. You have to be really gracious. All right, next question. Looking like you had a question or something. Miss Donna Rose wrote on Facebook that she is still working on that dinner that she promised y'all. Oh, so we're still working on that. Thank you, Donna. Don't make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool beans. So, can I get some small pieces of bread? <laughs> <laughs> um, musician, if there's ever a, mu a musician that's out and they play, um, and you're eating, and you know somebody comes up with a violin and they start playing, I mean, you can admire their playing, but. The expectation is that you can finish eating. They're just kind of there for entertainment. And then after, <laughs> I'm being, I'm keeping it simple, right? But after, after you're, um, if you feel, you know, touched or moved by it, um, if you're gonna excuse yourself to the restroom or by, by the time you leave, go be somewhere and there should be a tip jar out or available. Uh, if you want to tip them two to five dollars, you can do that. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I tend to think that certain foods are finger foods. So, at a formal dinner, will it ever be any finger food except the, except the bread? Hors d'oeuvres. Mm -hmm. If there's some past hors d'oeuvres, those are probably going to be finger foods. Okay. But if you're at a sit-down meal or something, not, it's no. Okay. Nope. Nope. And if they are, I mean, I would play conservative, and you better use your fork and stuff. And then also remember, we're here for what? A greater purpose than to eat. So you find a way to get around it. Don't eat very much of it. Smile and nod and do what you gotta do and, and get on to the next thing. And then when you leave, you pull into Wingstop and you get you some wings. Okay. All right. Some more questions down the 
I'm not gonna say you're not supposed to eat all your food. I'm just don't lick the plate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't and lick the plate. Like right. I mean, if and you do not clean it with your bread. Don't lick the plate. Do not clean that it with perfect. your bread. Do not clean yeah, off your bread with your bread. Yeah, we not stopping. Yeah, make it. Yeah, we all do. Yeah. All like you can have breakfast or dinner. No one can take the dollars. Yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 yeah. It's not going to be so you can eat just so it looks like it's gone. Sometimes that might be the case. Me, what? So, how confident are you in yourself? I'm very confident. So this is this is a good. I'm glad you asked that question. It's a great question. So like, say you I don't think they heard the question back here. Okay. So ask it again. My question was, um, sometimes like when you watch a five star restaurant, they don't have the prices on the menu. Um, True. How confident are you in ordering? So there are a couple of rules to this, right? One, as a young lady, a young woman going out. To an event where you may not know any people or you may know the people there, you might be on a date, you always have some backup cash with you. Because a situation could happen, you don't want to find yourself in the back washing dishes or the police being called. Like you need to be able to take care of you and you need to always be able to have an exit plan and a way to get back home. So whether it's you getting back home in your own car or you calling an Uber or a Lyft to meet you around the corner or down the street or something, you need to always in the back of your mind have an exit strategy, that's one. So number two, you always have enough money in your pocket or on your credit card and you know what that dollar amount is and then you need to know that that's what you need to stay up under. If you're in doubt, if you're really, really in doubt, I'm gonna say lean towards an appetizer and it's really expensive there, get you an appetizer, eat it slow, maybe get you a dessert and be out and trust that you was under $50 or $25. Um, Another thing, if someone else is purchasing dinner for you, do not. It's so rude and it's so discourteous to go crazy and get the most expensive thing on the menu. You don't necessarily want to have to get the cheapest thing on the menu, but you want to stay at the middle of the road. And um, if other people are, are going around the table, you kind of just eyeball what they're ordering and when in doubt, oh, I'll have what he's having. Oh, that sounds delicious. What did you get? Oh, can you broil that instead of you know? Can you broil that too? Oh, I'll take that then with the with the sauce or with the side of avocado. You know what I'm saying? You play it. Leverage the situation. Use the test to take the test. Same difference. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Use the test, take the test. Who's the most important person at the table? Who's your host? You follow their lead. But then you know what you can and you cannot do, and you know how you have to take care of yourself. Make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. Did they answer your question? Order. <laughs> it's kind of like um, it's like the little prelude to the to the dinner. So um, sometimes they're being passed around. So like it might be a little little waffle with a little piece of chicken. It's like a bite sized um, food or just something for you to eat and kind of nibble on. It might be cheese. It might be cheese and crackers. It might be snails. It might be. <laughs> let's be real. It might be little banana pudding shots. It could uh, order is anything that's kind of small and tiny that's bite-sized that's being passed around that's not a part of your seated dinner. Does that make sense? So what's an hors d'oeuvre? Anything bite-sized. Yeah, it's not a part, a part of the actual formal, formal seated dinner, dinner, dinner service. Yes, ma'am. Like be strategic in everything. 
and in terms of what you're wearing for that day. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is my body shape. I know that I'm gonna be getting in and out of a truck versus a car, so I need to carry this type of bag, I need to wear this type of a heel, and I need to wear this pantsuit instead of this skirt suit. And I need to make sure it's this color instead of that because this is also gonna make sure that I glow. And I know by because I researched this restaurant, typically the lighting during this time of the day is dim versus like this. So this is gonna determine how I do my makeup. Everything, be strategic about everything that's why we're teaching you about all this stuff because all of it works together to help make you a whole uh, a whole person a whole young lady a whole young man it helps to make sure that you're well-rounded and we can throw you into any situation and you can handle you can stand on your own not necessarily nitpicky just smart there's nothing wrong with being wise <clears throat> boss up what's the name of the class this is what bosses do always here in spirit actually. <laughs> well can you come to our skate night summers? And bring some some things that you just always <laughs> <have>. <laughs> Okay, so if you'll go ahead and make your way up here so we can do one gr uh, group picture. <laughs> Act like a lady will be dismissed. Debutantes will not be dismissed. Everyone else can leave the room. So that's the way that we can do. 